I bought two foals last year, so I'm an optimist. Um, so um, we got to look forward to what we will. The future does hold. Look, you live for every day. You take the vaccine because you want to continue to live. You don't give up. You go forward. When the man rings for me, I'll have to go. But he hasn't run because I've not given my number. But when he gets it, no doubt he will. But for the moment, I'm loving it. And I hope everyone else around enjoys the national and life like they should. I wish everyone well and I wish everyone happiness. Rarely is a life so universally admired as was that of Trevor Hemmings. A figure devoted to his sport, the man known as Mr. Aintree lived and breathed national hunt racing. Happiest when watching his chasers soaring over the iconic Grand National fences, he might have been Lancashire bred, but was Merseyside made. A fair and equal giver of opportunity, there were few trainers and jockeys in the northern climes who didn't benefit from his generosity. He's going to be irreplaceable, you know. Um, I, I can't thank him enough for stuff, things he did to me, let me ride nice horses, and I wrote my first festival winner for him on a homebred that he, you know, uh, for Tim to be. So, um, and, and no matter what the race was, whether it was a small race or a big race, he always said, look after yourself on the horse, mm. which was testament to him. I mean, there was never any pressure riding for him, and you just enjoyed riding for him. So, yeah, it, it's, um, it's a sad day, and he'd be sadly missed. No matter where you trained, his egalitarian approach meant his success was everyone's success. The fashion isn't for the big spending owners to have horses trained in the north of England, you know, and, and rightly or wrongly, I'd say wrongly, um, obviously. But, you know, he, he, he understood the value of how well the job could be done in the north of England. He was a northern man, he was northern based, and, and you know, he, he gave a lot of people a lot of chances, and I think the large majority of them produced for him. The former bricklayer laid the foundations for a burgeoning racing empire in 1985, with his first winner coming at Bath for trainer Charlie Watson. But although the flat held its appeal, for Hemmings the thrill of the obstacle was always far more attractive. And although football was another of his passions, the acquisition of Preston North End exemplifying the fact, it was racing that took up the brunt of his time. His love affair with the Grand National began in earnest with Hedgehunter, whose fall at the final fence in the 2004 edition did little to deter horse or owner from a second attempt. A year later and that tumble became a distant memory as Ruby Walsh steered the 7-1 favourite to a 14-length romp. Hedgehunter, who went on to finish second in a Gold Cup and a Grand National a year later, epitomised the doer staying chaser with which Hemmings became so entwined. And more would follow in that vein. The last fling, idle talk, and Cloudy Lane were all cut from the same cloth. So indeed was Alberta's run, whose relationship with the Cheltenham Festival was forged in fire. An RSA win and two Ryanair victories catapulted him to a zenith few can reach and marked his place on the Presby Park Roll of Honour. Alberta's run wins for the third time in the Cheltenham Festival. Interspersing Alberta's run successes was Balabriggs, whose bold, brash jumping style was subsumed from those who came before. Donald McCain took the patient approach with his dynamic stayer, racing him sparingly before a groundbreaking victory in the Kim Muir at the 2010 Cheltenham Festival. Balabriggs is tying up, falling in a hole as they hit the line, is tight. Presbury Triumph was merely the hors d'oeuvre to the Plat du Jour, the Grand National. From flagfall, Balabriggs blunderbussed his way over the obstacles. His size and scope a battering ram that his 39 rivals just could not breach. Coming to the elbow, it was clear he was about to give Trevor Hemmings a second win in the race and clinch him a memorable gold medal in the Owners' Championship. It's tribute to him, really, that I mean a lot of big names in racing, and I only speak highly of him. Um, and yeah, I, I wrote a lot of winners from, for, for, for very different trainers. Um, yeah, he, he supported a lot of people and, and, and he gave a lot of people chances. Four years later, and it was the turn of the talented Many Clouds to authoritatively stamp his hooves upon Aintree's hallowed turf. The yellow and green quarters had now become synonymous with the world's greatest race, and Hemmings' classiest individual was the latest to carry the eponymous silks to the table. Having completed a hat-trick of wins in the race for Trevor Hemmings, the Hennessy Gold Cup winner's tenure at the top of the jumping table would come to an abrupt end. In true Clouds fashion, he was to go out on his sword in the 
2017 Cotswold Chase. Regaining the lead having been headed, he showed pluck born of a higher power, overwhelming King George Winner Thistlecrack in the race's final throws. Like his owner, Clouds gave it everything he had until the bitter end. Tragically suffering a heart attack soon after crossing the line, he was a victim of his own dogged determination. Since then, a handful of hardy stayers kept the Hemmings show on the road. Vicente landed a Scottish national, vintage clouds won at the Cheltenham Festival, and Clothcap browbeat his way to a devastating Labbrokes trophy triumph. However much he achieved in the line of business, uh, sport, you know, through racing and football, um, you know, he certainly left his mark as well as a man. And um, you know, that's that's the most you can say about somebody is that he was just a, a really, really you know, top man in every walk of life that he dealt. The common denominator through the decades of victory for each of the Hemmings Battalion was a granite will to win. The Grand National epitomised the trait. The criteria required for such a test flowed through many of his talented chases and came to fruition for Hedgehunter, Balabriggs and Many Clouds. And like them, whose careers went from fledgling talent to lauded renown, the bricklayer turned billionaire proved he was not just top of the business tree, but also a master of the racing that he so loved. His generosity and kindness transcended the generations and his love for the horse bore through both in his homebreds and in his passion for the raw thrill of the steeplechase. Like many clouds, his most talented champion, Trevor Hemmings, is no longer with us. But his legacy and memory will live on long into the annals of racing history. He was always very good with my mum, etc. To be honest, you know, after she lost dad, they always, him and Catherine always looked after her fantastically at the races and so on. And um, you know, it was just it's a, it was a pleasure and a joy to be part of the whole Trevor Hemmings experience.